traders, I'm excited to present my top swing ideas for the week ahead. And last week was really a brilliant week for swing trading, for momentum trading, with so many fantastic opportunities that had directional momentum and follow through. And my ideas this week are going to be very similar to last week's in the sense that I'm going to continue to just stick with what's working in this environment. Um, you know, like the breakout idea I shared last week uh, in Bitcoin, IBIT, the ETF. Um, so, you know, again, I don't want to jump a in ahead of a, you know, a freight train here. Um, the market is in melt-up mode, um, but that's still no reason for me to look to get short, waiting for things to change, be reactive until then sticking with what is working. So let's get straight into it as I share my actionable ideas, trade plans, trade management for my top swing ideas for the week ahead. Starting off with my first idea, and that's going to be again in IBIT and Bitcoin. Um, and basically last week, you know, the top idea from the watch list, that was the breakout in IBIT. Also, obviously related to Bitcoin, the breakout over 50K which obviously we saw had immense momentum. Similarly in IBIT, that breakout idea, over 30 had amazing momentum, you know, along with Bitcoin. Um, and that was really just a textbook consolidation. It aligned on multiple time frames, um, and it led to a meaningful breakout. And it really it ticked all of the boxes that I look for for this particular setup, the consolidation breakout. Um, definitely urge you to go back, study it, um, you know, mark up your charts and look to learn from it. Um, and, you know, now with... The way Bitcoin's consolidating, um, very close to the, the all-time high, um, you know, around the 62K mark, it's allowed for another interesting opportunity and setup to form from a risk-reward perspective, especially with IBIT. Um, and this particular, you know, breakout, I'm just looking for momentum continuation. Um, and on my time frame, once, once it's confirmed, this is something I'd look to hold for three days up to a full week. Um, but, you know, what's my exact plan? Well, if Bitcoin does break above the 63 and a half, 64K region and IBIT is holding well with authority over 36, so kind of over Friday's high, um, or perhaps on Monday we get a gap up over Friday's high or we open in this range and we reclaim Friday's high with authority, that's what I'm going to look to add to um, a position that I already have on an IBIT. I'd look to add over 36 with a hard stop um, at or near or below the low of day. Um, depending on how it sets up intraday. Uh, my first target in this would be for Bitcoin to um, get pretty close to it, its all-time high, um, you know, around 68, 69K. Um, and at that point in time, you know, I might look to scale a little bit out of my position along the way. I might look to scale out in terms of one ATR um, in IBIT. Uh, I might look to take off you know, one fifth or a quarter of my position, but the ultimate target for me on IBIT and how I'm going to look to manage this position as it works, if we do get follow through in Bitcoin in the short term, is I'm going to just be looking to manage this on the hourly time frame, and essentially as IBIT on the hourly time frame makes, as we kind of make higher highs, look to sell a quarter of my position, we come back, if we maintain higher lows, I trail my stop, if we make a higher high, I take off another quarter of my position and I continue to just trail my stop using the higher high, higher low approach on the hourly time frame. Um, so again, looking for a break and hold over Friday's high with authority, looking for Bitcoin to break out of its short term consolidation currently around the 62, 63K area over 64's confirmation. Um, and thereafter going to be looking to scale out into all time highs, take off, um, you know, a quarter a third, a fifth of my position, depending on what the price action looks like and how quickly we get there if we do. Thereafter, looking to scale out of my position using the higher high, higher low approach. Now, the second idea that I have is going to be in ARM, A-R-M. This is one that I've spoken about previously. And basically, semis continue to just, you know, they, 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 they lead the tech sector right now. They, they, they really are leading the overall market. Um, and it seems like, you know, we're having rotation um, into individual semi uh, stocks on a daily and weekly basis. Um, we get breakouts, we get further rotation into other semi names, TSM, AMD from last week, obviously SMCI, NVIDIA. Um, you know, and what I like is that ARM has spent um, some considerable time now consolidating, you know, with levels shining through across multiple timeframes, which I like. And... Um, 
you know, for me, something that I like, which, which I noted on my previous watch list, was obviously we had this range with 135s, and then we had low 120s as support, resistance 135s, and now we're starting to consolidate above previous resistance of that mini consolidation. So that's signaling, um, you know, bullish price action to me that buyers are stepping up, and we could be nearing um, a potential explosive and, and significant directional breakout in ARM. Um, so that's something that I'm looking for that, for me, increases the likelihood of this breakout having legs this week. So what's my exact plan for ARM, ARM? So I'm looking for the stock to get above, and we can even go on to the hourly time frame for this. It shines across multiple time frames. I'm looking for us to get above Friday's high. I'm looking for us to hold above 145's Monday. Um, if we can hold above that with authority and we see some Orville, we see some elevated um, um, volume, that's when I'm going to look to initiate my position against the low of the day. And um, I'll be in about half of my position. Thereafter, if we can break above 150, which for me would ultimately confirm this breakout, um, I'm going to look to double my position at that point. Um, definitely going to be looking to see if it continues to display some notable strength in the sector, relative strength on the day. Um, but that's what I'm looking for. Break above, Friday's high, hold above this kind of resistance of this bullish flag, um, double my position over 150. And the first target for me is going to be a move into 160. I think as we approach 160 area, previous highs, um, this zone might act as potential supply. So I'll definitely look to take off um, some of my position into 160. That also works out to be one full ATR from 150 to 160. And then after that, I'm going to look to trail my stop using the 15 minute time frame. Um, and again, using the higher low, um, higher high approach of scaling out of my position as we make higher highs on the 15 minute chart, significant higher highs intraday and over a period of multiple days. And as we confirm higher lows within that uptrend, I'm gonna to look to be trailing my stop to those specific points. And then my final idea for the week, one that is definitely on a much higher time frame, is small caps IWM. You know, IWM closed the week, um, you know, right near the high, um, but notably, you know, IWM actually was showing relative strength to the broader market to spy and the tech sector, obviously, which is leading the market. The tech sector closed up 2%. IWM closed up more um, more, more, more around um, 3% for the week, um, which is pretty significant that we're showing this relative strength. If we zoom out, this is what I really like about IWM. Now we've formed a multi-year consolidation and base. I like that we've seen considerable support, considerable buying. We've now seen buyers step up into this zone. We've broken above resistance of this multi-year base, closed near the high, showed relative strength to you know, the overall market, to the tech sector. So I really like that. And what I'm looking for now, if you go down just to a daily chart, I'm looking for it to ma maintain its momentum in the upcoming week, maintain its relative strength. And I'm essentially looking to get long. If we can put in a little higher low on Monday or Tuesday or throughout the week, kind of in the 205 region, my stop is going to go below Friday's low, around 203. Um, or I would look to get long if we had a significant breakout above Friday's high, still with a stop below Friday's low. So there is quite a wide stop there. Um, but my first target here would be a move, if we go on to the weekly, a move into 210 region, 210, 211 region, which could act as significant supply and resistance. That's where I'd probably look to take off a third or even up to half of my position. I'd then look to trail my stop and raise my stop. Um, so that would be quite a um, quite a lofty scale out of my position. Um, but the reason I'm doing that is because then I have a much higher time frame on this position. So, you know, once that level, if confirms and I'm able to get in 205, lower high, risking a couple points to Friday's low, we get that move into potential um, major resistance to 10 to 11 to 12. I'll look to take a third half of my position, turn it into somewhat of a risk-free trade. Um, and thereafter, really going to be expanding my time frame here. Um, and I'm going to be looking to hold the position for you know, really an extended period of time, potentially even up to a month. Um, and I'm targeting a move towards around the 225 to 235 region. And this is going to be a significant potential, potential resistance zone. If you look here, you know, 225 region up to 230s, 235s region, potential um, major supply resistance as we're looking to come into you know, all-time highs for the IWM. Um, but basically, I'm looking to trail my position. How am I looking to manage my position? I'll be doing this on the hourly time frame, 
Um, once we get above 210, that's when I'm gonna be looking to trail my position using the hourly time frame, higher lows, but I'll be doing that for about half of my position that remains. So half of my position will be trailed on the hourly time frame, higher lows, higher high approach. Um, but then the rest of my position, I'm gonna be looking to trail using the five day simple moving average. So if we, here's the five day simple moving average. If we are trailing, uh, if we're trending higher, we're in 215, 220, 225 region, um, we'll definitely be trading above a rising five day moving average. If we turn and we break below this five day moving average, signals a short term trend break, uh, you know, along with my other half of the position, assuming being stopped out on the hourly time frame, that's when I'll look to exit the rest of my position. So using the five day moving average for trailing the remainder of the position. So breaking it up half and half. But overall, I think IWM, notable breakout, huge base over multiple years, big breakout, closing over resistance on Friday, relative strength to the overall market. 210, 211, first target, take some risk off, start trailing my stop. Thereafter, looking for a move back into major resistance, 225, 230 region, um, and obviously trailing my stop fairly loosely using the hourly approach and the five-day moving average approach. And essentially looking to see if small caps, now with the market at all-time highs, seeing a little bit of euphoria around, maybe we get a few weeks of small caps playing catch-up as people look to you know, put on riskier investments, speculation increases in this sort of environment. I think the thesis makes sense, so let's see if that plays out. Um, let me know what you guys think about these ideas. Let me know if you have any other ideas that perhaps I should add to my watch list. Anything you think from a risk reward perspective is really setting up in an attractive way. I'd love to hear it. Um, good luck for the week. It should be an exciting week. Good luck for the week, and I will see you all next week. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part? You don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.